Hi, my name is Louise and I'm at San Mateo Piano. Today we're going to be talking about what the best pianos are for a beginner. When purchasing a piano, the most important thing to look for is how the piano responds to touch. So for many other instruments, the beginning stages of practice are dedicated to learning how to produce tone. But with the piano, it's a bit unique in that you can produce quality tone from the instrument without knowing how to play it. Because of this, the two things that you will need to consider as you look for your own piano are the piano's action and the weight of the keys. The action of the piano refers to the inner workings of the instrument or how the piano produces sound when you strike a key. The weight or the weighting is how much resistance is felt when you press down on a key. So a lot of the videos that I've seen that talk about the best pianos for beginners focus solely on lower price point digital keyboards. While the price of these is attractive, they're not the best long-term investment. They are a short-term solution. These pianos will not help beginners develop techniques they need in order to progress. Investing in a higher quality digital piano or even an acoustic piano are the best options for a person who wishes to develop their technique and playing abilities. These are pianos that a beginner can grow with. That being said, today we're going to be looking at the Kawai CA49 and the Kawai K300. What I consider to be the most important components of the CA49 are the wooden key sticks. So I've talked about piano actions before, but I'll do a quick rundown. The typical digital piano uses plastic keys. Here's Kawai's RH3 action, which is a pretty standard weighted plastic key action. We'll notice that the key's pivot point is at the back of the key. This means that when you try to play higher on the key, it gets increasingly harder to press. Now let's look at the Grandfield Compact action, which is found in the CA49. Similarly to a grand piano action, when a key is pressed, the hammer moves upwards to strike the string, or in the case of the CA49, a sensor. The key stick is significantly longer than a standard plastic key action, and the pivot point is near the center of the key. This means that there is more of an even touch as you go up and down the key. This matters because as a person progresses, they may need to play higher on the key when playing a combination of white and black keys, for example. So having a more even weighting across the keys is important in order for you to develop proper technique. The CA49 is great for someone who wants a good piano action and touch, but does not want the commitment of an acoustic piano. Not to mention, the CA49 is a quarter of the weight of an acoustic upright. It also has the benefit of being able to be practiced through headphones if you have a late practice schedule or live in a home that has shared walls with neighbors. Another reason I like this piano is that it comes in a variety of finishes and its price point is only slightly higher than the CN29, which is a digital piano in a cabinet with weighted plastic keys. I have my own CA49 at home, and despite it being the most basic piano in the CA series, it has served me well for practicing, teaching virtually, and for recording. If you want more information on this piano, you can take a look at our video above. Next up, we have the Kawai K300, which is a mid-sized upright piano. This is a great option for someone who wants the full presence of an acoustic piano, but is looking for something with a smaller footprint than a grand piano. A piano's string length affects its volume and tonal resonance. In an upright piano, the strings are oriented vertically. The longer the strings, the taller the piano. An upright piano action features a long wooden key stick. When a key is pressed, this triggers the hammer to move forward and strike the string. Something to keep in mind with any acoustic piano is that you need to tune it regularly. Use as well as changes in temperature and humidity that can occur during the different seasons affect the tuning of the piano. Typically, with the purchase of a new piano, the first tuning is included. Thereafter, we recommend you tune your instrument one to two times per year. Overall, I hope this video is helpful to you and hopefully you can apply some of this information as you look into purchasing your own piano. Just as a little bit of personal insight, I grew up playing a digital piano with weighted plastic keys. We didn't have space for anything bigger, and I lived in a place that had shared walls with neighbors. I took piano lessons once a week with a teacher who had a grand piano in her home. And I think playing on an instrument with a good piano action and touch really helped improve my playing abilities and techniques. All of this being said, I understand that purchasing a piano is a big investment. 
If the pianos that I mentioned in today's video are not within your budget, I would still encourage you to seek out an option that uses a good action and has weighting in the keys. Whether you're a beginner or an advanced player, the action of a piano is important because it's responsible for interpreting your intentions. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more videos like this in the future, you can subscribe to our channel. As usual, I will be responding to comments. So if you have any feedback or questions, you can let us know. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.